I bet with Interbet only. They're a fantastic site. I've never had any issues with them. They are very professional. There's never a problem. You deposit money, two seconds later it's in your account. You withdraw, which I do very occasionally. And uh, I believe it's also two seconds it's in your account. Really looking forward to race number nine, bringing down the curtain at Hollywood Bets, which is the Hollywood Bets Bright Future 76 handicap over 1600 meters. 16.30 will be the off time. And although it's only a 76 handicap, the reason I'm really looking forward to it because there's some up and coming horses. And then we have a horse like number two, El Dante, who is a five year old, but they've taken their time. He's had a lot of time off and they've taken a lot of time to get him back to his best. And before we get into the form, we do have a rerun of El Dante when winning, followed by interviews with trainers Byron Forster and also Vaughan Marshall. To Congo Compact. And at this stage of the game, 300 out, El Dante looks full of action. He had the movie star looks today, and he'll not let the team down. Sent about his business, and it's all over. This is Bullseye, geared down by seven. Tashman second, Congo Compact third. Yeah, he, he's done particularly well. He ran a good race last time out, getting touched off over a mile. Um, I think he's possibly the best of my, my five runners on, on Sunday. Um, I think he's in with a very big chance. It's certainly general. Yeah, second run uh, off a break. Uh, look, he's a difficult horse to train. He's very aggressive in the morning and uh, he's also quite temperamental in his races. If he takes the bit, he's, he's really difficult to settle. So, fortunately, it does look like there is a bit of speed in the race. So hopefully, he can be able to settle off that and, and finish off. His comeback run wasn't a bad run, five lengths uh, off against, uh, Al, I think, Al Dante's in the race again. So if that's the line horses, it wasn't a bad comeback run. And uh, look, we're just hoping to see some improvement. So race number nine over the mile trip, 1600 meters will be the race to bring down the curtain. Let's kick off with number two, El Dante. As you would have heard in my commentary there, he had the movie star looks. And when he was presented into the parade ring, he stood out like a sore thumb. He's an absolute smasher of a horse. We talk about good looking horses each and every meeting because there are so many good looking horses out there. But then you get those horses with the X factor. Despite it being a 75 handicap on that occasion, he could have been in the Hollywood Bets July and he wouldn't have been out of place. He looked magnificent. He looked different class and the race just showed his well-being. MJ Udendahl's always thought a heck of a lot of El Dante and after winning his maiden, they just had to take their time, take the foot off the pedal and I'm not exactly sure what went on behind the scenes but you'll notice he's a five-year-old. He's only having his seventh lifetime appearance. Last run, draw a line through it. He didn't stay the 1750. He went up front, he's a powerful front runner, and at this stage, I think a mile with the pace he shows, and he's got that wonderful action. Why change a winning recipe? Obviously the race was there last time out, being a 73 handicap. They took their chances, and they decided, let's go back to plan A. 1600, because of his action and the pace that he has. And being a five-year-old, they're ahead of the handicapper. He races off a 73. I think he's closer to an 85 and maybe even a 90 in time to come if things map out with him. Like I mentioned, he had that long layoff. You'll see number two, El Dante, when he walks into the ring on Sunday, he'll stand out, but so too will Professor Snape, another lovely looking individual. He's a gray, and the grays always look so well. But I remember on his debut, I actually went for him on his debut each way at around 25 to one on his looks alone. He was expected to just need it, and we heard from Vaughan Marshall that's his best runner on the day. Professor Snape, he's come to the course on two occasions, he's got two seconds, so it's not like he'll be out of place here for the first time. He's been here twice before. Number 10, Golden Peace is the interesting runner because he's open to make any amount of improvement. 
He came to KwaZulu-Natal after a break. He beat a horse called Majestic Rain. He shoulders 59 and a half kilograms. So between number two, El Dante, who's got 58 and a half. He's a five-year-old. Professor Snape with the 60 kgs. And then number 10, Golden Peace with the 59 and a half. He's still maturing. He still doesn't quite know what to do. Once the penny drops, we'll see the best of him. And it could be on Sunday with number 10, Golden Peace. Looking beyond those runners, number three, Tashman. You can never leave him at. He was well beaten, soundly beaten over six lengths by El Dante. So he could close that deficit. Number five, the Bayou. He's a course and distance specialist, but he's a horse who just likes a little bit of sting out the ground. And at the early stage of recording, the going is good to soft, but I think it's going to dry up significantly, come closer to race time. Unless the heavens open, they are predicting some afternoon showers, but that might just come just after the last race. So let's see how the, the weather gods go, because it is going to be 31 degrees, so it's going to be a warm day, and the conditions could end up being good. As it stands, it's good to soft but I believe on Sunday morning, the going, I don't want to preempt anything, but the weather we've had in the last 24 hours, I see the going being on the good side. So that might just be against number five, the Bayou. But wrapping it up in a nutshell, number two, El Dante. He sets the standard off his current rating. Number nine, Professor Snape will be the second pick. And third, number 10, Golden Peace at the stage of the game. Uh, my name is Danny Deliberto, founder of Ladles of Love. It was founded back in 2014. Communities we, we work with are all over the peninsula and um, we're working with 138 beneficiaries now. We've grown exponentially. Um, we've been able to do that because of all the kindness that we have experienced um, from individuals and corporates such as uh, Interbet who just want to be part of the change.